OK, so ladies and gentlemen, when working through these problems, I have 1 divided by secant of x times tangent of x equals cosecant of x minus sine of x. Now remember, when solving our trigonometric identities, we kind of have like that step-by-step -step process that we want to work on. The first thing is to pick a side, either the left or the right side, to eliminate. OK, so I have one student saying left side, one student saying right side. Anybody? So you tried the left side, right? And you didn't get so far? But you tried the right side, and that's what you like to look at. OK. And you said just try the left side anyways. All right. Um, well, since you tried the right side, let's just go and work on there. And like I said, guys, you really just want to um, try it out. And you know, let's just see where you get. All right? There's no right or wrong answer. Just try something, and then let's see how far you can get. So let's pretend we let's try the right side, because that's where you started. Now, when trying the right side, I just want to focus on simplifying the right side. I'm not going to kind of forget about I have the left side until I go back to verify. So on the right side, the first thing I want to do is apply operations. That means add, subtract, multiply, divide, um, factor, whatever operation might be possible. So here it says cosecant of x minus sine of x. Well, those are not like terms, right? I can't just subtract them. Um, so then I look into, well, can I use maybe some identities that might help me out with that? Well, yeah, you could use your reciprocal identities to write this as 1 over sine of x minus sine of x over 1. Now, the reason why I would write it like this is actually because I find, I find by using my reciprocal identities, um, I can write them all in terms of sine and cosine. And sometimes that's very helpful if you can write all your terms in, in, in sine and cosine. Because then I can see, well, I can su actually can subtract these. All I need to do is just make sure I get the same denominator. So to get these to be the same denominator, I need to multiply by sine of x over sine of x. Right? Because you've got you to subtract them, so you've got to have the same denominator. So therefore, that's 1 minus sine squared of x divided by my common denominator, which is sine of x. Then I say 1 minus sine squared of x by using my Pythagorean identities equals cosine squared of x over sine of x. Now, that is not 1 over secant of x times tangent of x. So I need to keep on looking and see, all right, how can I keep on rewriting this? Well, cosine squared equals cosine of x times cosine of x over sine of x, right? And therefore, I could probably group one of these. And you could say that this could be written as cosine times, uh, cosine times cotangent. So you could write that as cosine, cosine of x times cotangent of x. Now, is that the same thing as 1 over secant of x or 1 over secant and tangent of x? Well, it's not displayed as the same, but if you took the reciprocal, cosine is the same thing as 1 over secant, right? And cotangent is the same thing as 1 over tangent. So therefore, you can just simply display it as 1 over secant of x tangent of x. And there you go. That's number 17. Yay.